What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about five of the easiest ways that you can quickly speed up models in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So before we get started, just a quick reminder that the SketchUp Essentials course is having our end of summer sale. The SketchUp Essentials course is my step-by-step -step course teaching people how to use SketchUp and layout. It's got very comprehensive training that'll teach you start to finish how to use SketchUp. So in addition, it also has access to our live calls where you can get on calls and ask any questions that you have so I can make sure that you're not getting stuck. It also has access to our community forum. So if you need help, um, that's another great place to get help. If you do jump into the course this week, you do also get access to my full SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, which is a deep dive into SketchUp and layout, as well as my Twin Motion Essentials course, where I teach you how to render inside of Twin Motion. So if you want to check that out, note that this sale is running through the end of the week. So make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. All right. And so what I wanted to show you first off is the very first thing I do anytime I get a heavy model in order to speed it up. Because there's a couple different simple things that you can do to speed up a model. But the number one thing that I do is I jump over into my styles right here. So I select my active style and I go into the edit tab and under this first option right here, I toggle profiles off. And so notice how when I'm orbiting around in here and you may or may not be able to see it, but as soon as I turn profiles off, this orbits significantly smoother and faster. Um, that's because the profiles are coming in here and they're actually um, thickening all of the edges that are in here, right? Like you can adjust these. Um, but what they're doing is they're showing all of the edges twice, meaning SketchUp has to work twice as hard. Um, so anytime I get a model that's even remotely heavy, the first thing I do is I disable profiles. So the next thing you can do that makes almost zero difference to your actual day-to-day -day modeling is toggling shadows off if shadows are turned on. So if you have shadows in your model, what they're going to do is they're going to display in here um, in your scene, and this is going to calculate where the sun is going to go on the ground, right? And so if you have shadows toggled on, what you might notice is if you kind of orbit out of this like this, what it's doing is it's having to refresh every time that you orbit and every time that you move and replace the shadows on the ground. So my recommendation is keep shadows toggled off in your SketchUp model until you actually need them. Okay, so next up is something that can help with the overall speed of your models as well. So textures are basically image files inside of SketchUp, right? So every time you apply a texture to a model, um, then you have to basically include that image file as a part of your SketchUp file, and those can really slow things down. Now, if you have an image file that has high resolution textures, there's two things you could do in order to speed up your model. So the first is you can go into your style, right? So you go to edit, style, or I guess you could do this with a styles toolbar as well. If you toggle in the materials or the face settings page between shaded using textures and display in shaded mode, what that's going to do is that's going to basically shade your areas in your SketchUp model rather than loading in those image texture files. What that means is that SketchUp isn't working there trying to display any high resolution textures or anything like that. So what you could do is you could set up a scene where you have the texture files on and you could set up a scene in shaded mode where you don't, right? And notice how even when I click over here, it takes a second for it to load these textures in here, but you could set up a scene that is only in shaded mode that's going to make your model run a lot faster. Now, alternatively, there is an option um, or an extension in the SketchUp extension warehouse called Material Resizer. Material Resizer is a tool from SketchUp that allows you to basically resize texture images inside of your model. So when you install this free extension, what you can do is you can go to Extensions, Material Resizer, and it's gonna go find all of those texture materials that are in your model, and it's gonna show you how big they are. And so you can see how, for example, I've got a couple materials in here that are pretty big, right? This Laminata 01 material and the Tumbled Brick. And I'm gonna to toggle us back into material preview mode real quick. Um, but what you could do, and note that this is, um, I guess I would call it destructive in the sense that you can't go back from this, but if you wanted to take this texture file and reduce it, 
you could type in a value. So let's say I wanted to reduce it to a thousand pixels, click on go. What this is gonna do is this is gonna go in and it's going to resize that material so that it's a smaller, lower resolution image. Now, obviously if you do this, it is going to reduce the resolution of the image inside of your SketchUp model. So that is something to be aware of, but this is a quick, easy way to manage the size of materials that are already in your model. All right, so next up, a lot of the time, what we want to do is we want to work on a building model or something like that, right? So say I wanted to come in here and work on the building. Well, right now this model has a bunch of extra stuff in here that I don't really need until I'm done. And so what you can do is you can create a view, which is a working view. So if I go to view animation right here, I'm going to call this a working view. And within that working view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take things like the furniture, right? And I'm going to create a tag. I'm just going to call this furniture. And I'm just going to place these objects on the furniture tab. And so when I do that, what I can do is I can toggle those off. Right? So if I toggle all that furniture off, that's just geometry that I don't have to display anymore, meaning that this is going to be a lot faster for me to fly around. And then when I need it, I can toggle it back on. But what we might do is we might create this working view, right? I'm just gonna update this. And then we're also going to create a presentation view. So we're gonna call this presentation, right? In the presentation view, I wanna save this so that I have this turned on, I want to save it so that I have shadows turned on, all of those kind of like heavy things in here. What I want to do is I want to create that working view where those are all going to show up. If I wanted profiles in here, I could do that this way. Um, but then I would just update this so that I have a presentation view. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new style for right now. But now what I can do is I can toggle into this faster working view and you could even save your um, style to the scene as well, right? So I'm gonna update this. This is gonna be a new style, but you could save this as a style to the scene um, that's going to be really lightweight. But then in presentation mode, when I toggle back in there, everything's going to show up and it's going to be ready for me to export. Okay, and then one final tip that's a little bit counterintuitive, but it actually can significantly affect their performance in your model. This model may not be the best example of this, but we're gonna use it anyway. So um, one of the things that SketchUp has that's actually really helpful is a tool called the Outliner. The Outliner is a tool that can be found over here in your tray, and it basically contains or visually shows all of the different groups and components in your model. It can be very helpful for visualizing the way that things are grouped as well as getting into nested components and groups and editing them without you having to like click and click and click and click over and over again. So it's super valuable. Um, but one of the things about the outliner is when you're making changes in your SketchUp model, the outliner is actually like dynamically updating, right? And you can't really see it in here, but every time you make a change in your SketchUp model, the outliner goes back and it like recalculates or reruns and updates based on what's in your model. Well, if you have a big model that has like thousands and thousands and thousands of groups, this updating in the background can actually really slow down your model. So one of the things I recommend that takes almost no effort whatsoever is when you're not using the outliner, which by the way, I do recommend you use the outliner as an organizational tool, but when you're not using it, just close it right here. As soon as you minimize the outliner, it's no longer dynamically updating and it won't update until you open it back up. So my recommendation is if you need to work with the outliner, open it when you need to and then close it afterwards, especially at a large model with lots of nested groups and components, because that's actually going to positively affect your performance in SketchUp. So those are five things I do with almost every SketchUp model to improve my performance. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have some tips that I didn't talk about in this video. If you are looking to learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course, which is on sale through the end of the week at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.